what are you trying to say? Banned cartoons, swastikas, Dragon Ball Z, and a Pikachu Photoshop to look like Hitler. It's not a game review, it's a game theory. Hi, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's done trying to relate its educational merit to Pokemon memes. Alright, you've waited long enough for this episode, so let's not waste any time with silly, drawn-out introductions filled with desperate attempts at humor. Ho ho! I just called you out, son! The question today is whether or not Pokemon is racist, and I'm leaving the final answer up to you. Since Pokemon's first appearance in the Western market, there have been two major accusations of its content containing racist and hateful imagery. The first, which claims that Pokemon is pro-Nazi, is the easier to answer, so let's start there, shall we? Now, if modern first-person shooters have taught me anything, it's that Nazis are bad, okay? So why would anyone think that a game featuring such adorable little pocket creatures would also support ethnic cleansing? It all stems from this. <laughs> A swastika emblazoned on the Koga's Ninja Trick trading card. Parents, after stumbling across this glowing red beacon of hate, drew the obvious conclusion that Golbat was a metaphor for white supremacy, meaning that the entire Pokemon franchise as a whole was enlisting children to become neo-Nazis. But we, as enlightened gamers, know that Nintendo wouldn't take this risk. We're talking about a company that replaced seals with snow monsters in the original Ice Climbers to avoid anyone claiming that they had you clubbing seals to death. <laughs> As if anyone would actually care about that. Moving on. The swastika pattern, or manji as it's called in Japan, dates back long before goose-stepping became an army fad, as far back as 4000 BC. The word swastika literally means lucky, or well-being, and became a common symbol in Eastern religions, particularly Hinduism and Buddhism, representing everything from the sun, peace, and the number 10,000 to the entirety of creation. But World War II made everyone, particularly in the West, forget about all of that. In the late 19th century, the swastika was found on ancient pottery in Germany, leading researchers to conclude that it was an important religious symbol for Germanic ancestry. Soon after, a German nationalist movement that believed in the preservation of a pure-blooded Aryan master race took up this ancestral symbol as their logo. Because of its popular appeal at the time and its cultural significance, Hitler made sure to include it in his design for the Nazi flag. A regular Betsy Ross, that one. Moving on to the main course of today's episode, Episode, a question still contested 11 years after it first appeared. On January 5th, 2000, poet and children's book author Carol Weatherford accused the character design of Generation 1's Jinx as being an overweight drag queen version of black stereotypes. In response, episodes of the anime have been banned, figurines have been discontinued, and Jinx's skin was forever changed from black to purple. She also called out Dragon Ball's Mr. Popo, leading to his lip size being reduced, and a palette swap from black to- OH MY GOD IT'S BLINDING! But for as absurd as her claims sound, there are centuries of evidence to back her up. It all dates back to minstrel shows. And his liver removed, and his bowels unplugged, and his nostrils raped, and his bottom burnt off. Not these. These. Stage acts featuring white comedians painting their faces with grease paint to portray black characters. Beginning in the 1830s and growing in popularity after the American Civil War, these performances portrayed African Americans as dumb, lazy, and superstitious. The grease makeup exaggerated exaggerated the size of the performer's eyes and lips, thus embedding these traits in the popular culture's understanding of the black image. Cartoons especially adopted this visual shorthand, perhaps most famously Merry Melodies, as Bugs and the Gang had 11 episodes retroactively banned for its portrayal of other races. Uh, please don't beat me, Martha! Don't beat that tired old body! No! Don't! Minstrel shows continued until, get this, 
the 1960s, when the civil rights movement finally brought a close to these spectacles. But how does this all relate to Jinx? Well, there's obviously the exaggerated eyes and lips, but there's also her gloves, which were another common element in the minstrel costume. In addition, the name Jinx is an obvious reference to the word Jinx, or something that brings bad luck, which can either relate to the aforementioned superstitious characterizations in minstrel shows, or a belief in voodoo, another common black stereotype. Type. Plus, the fact that Jinx is a curvaceous woman-shaped Pokemon may have roots in the Mammy archetype, a specific stereotype for black women involving a large, imposing female who is the dominant, authoritative figure of the house. But though it's a compelling case, it's far from perfect. The fact that Jinx is an ice psychic type would have no explanation. In addition, though Carol Weatherford would claim that the blonde hair is a reference to a black woman's fondness for wigs and weaves, the fact that Queen Latifah wears fake hair is far far from convincing evidence. Her complaints were countered by Pokemon supporters presenting two alternative theories. The first is that Jinx is based on a Nordic ice princess with black skin, an odd claim considering that black skin and Nordic heritage don't really go hand in hand. But there is indeed one figure that fits the bill. Hell, Norse guardian of H.E. single hockey stick. Hell the person is a female deity, daughter of Loki, and appointed by Odin as guardian of the dead. And unlike western conceptions of Hell, the place as a fire-filled land of suffering, Norse mythology depicts Hell as a frozen land of bitterness and pain, like New York in the winter, which would explain Jinx being an ice type. And like any good Norse woman, Hell is depicted with long, flowing blonde hair. This theory could also explain Jinx's weird opera singer get up. You know the phrase it ain't over until the fat lady sings with the fat woman in a viking costume? That all originates from a series of four operas by Wagner called The Ring Cycle. Think Lord of the Rings but with vikings and in German. Anyway, this huge 15 hour epic ends with a 20 minute solo by the Valkyrie Brynhild. Thus, the stereotype of opera singers and the appearance of Jinx. So those are some major points in this theory's favor, but here's the downside. Yes, Hell is said to have black skin, but only on half of her body. The other half is Caucasian. It's a good theory, but again, not perfect. Finally, there's the argument that Jinx is based on a fashion fad of 1990s Japan, Gongoro. This trend features Japanese girls tanning heavily to make their skin as dark as possible, then using white or light pink eyeshadows and lipstick to embellish their features. In addition, Gongoro girls heavily bleach their hair to be orange, blonde, or silver, and tend to keep the styling long. Between the dark skin, pink lipstick, and long blonde hair, it's a compelling argument, but the problem here is with the timing. According to a Time Magazine article, the first Pokemon games took six years to complete, meaning development began in 1990. The Gongoro fad reached its height in the mid to late 90s between 1995 and 2000, which would mean that Jinx was included extremely late in the development cycle. But here's the kicker, if Jinx were indeed Gongoro, she would still be racist. Sociologists have traced the inspiration for the fad to the worldwide influence of hip-hop culture, with Japanese teen girls darkening their faces and accentuating their eyes and lips to emulate black females. In fact, Gongoro literally translates as blackface. So if Jinx's design was indeed inspired by this fashion trend, she would still be based on racial stereotypes. Just ones that were twice removed. Anyway, there you have it. Jinx, the hip-hop fashion trending Norse Viking opera singer goddess racist Pokemon. Which theory is correct? I'll leave that for you to debate. Personally, I'm just glad that the Rastafarians haven't lodged any complaints about Tangela. Oh, and Mr. Popo? Yeah, he has no-